show you real quick how to add in a lead or event manually um, from your end just accessing the software no matter how good your website is there's always going to be customers that maybe just want to talk over the phone or they have a special event you need to give them some different pricing and you want to add that in on your end without them submitting it through an inflatable office website so we'll just go over to events and we'll click on leads and events here and i'm going to click on the add lead event button Usually the first step of any sales conversation like this is just figuring out when the customer actually needs their inventory for it because I want to begin checking availability. So I'm going to click on July 30th and this is a one day event. So we're going to click on that day again here and we're going to set this from being from 2.30 p.m. all the way up until 6.30. I'm going to go ahead and click the apply button. So once I've done that, what we actually just did is now my whole inventory is showing real time availability and pricing. So from there, I can navigate just by scrolling this list. I could search in uh, an item name. So I just typed in joust and it popped up inflatable joust, or I could look at a category. So maybe the customer just wants something from our water ride selection. I could click that. And then I could also search within this category. So there's a lot of ways to really quickly find what you're looking for here. And they just need one dolphin slide. So I'm going to go ahead and add that on there. And right away, we were given some pricing. So whatever order you want to go in to collect the rest of the information is really up to you. And I can navigate these pages by clicking on these sections. It'll actually drag me down to that section. So if I wanted to fill in the customer information, I could click on customer. And all it did was scroll me down the page to where I'm going to type in their info. Also, a good note is this can actually be reorganized. So if you don't like the way it's listed with event at the top and then the rentals and the payment information beneath, this can all be changed. That's no problem. Just let us know. We'd be more than happy to point you in the right direction. But I'm going to go ahead and fill out their info. And in this case, it's somebody I've actually worked with before. So it's Joel V. Johnson, and I can just click on his information. So that'll just auto fill itself in. Now, Joel's going to have his event at his house. So the venue information where the event is taking place, we're actually just going to want to copy the address from his customer record. So I'm going to click this button. This prevents me from having to enter it in all over again. And I'm going to select that we're going to be doing this event on grass. And this is just a regular drop off. And we'll just name this event birthday party. So I've got all that information filled in. So now that I have the venue information in there, it's actually going to be able to calculate what the delivery charge is for this event as well. Um, and really, I mean, I can add on additional information like customer notes or fill out any additional fields. We can go ahead and put an email on file since I didn't have that. And at this point, I'm ready to create this. So I can just go ahead and hit the save button and we can see we have quote selected. So we're not bumping it up into a contract or a confirmed event yet. I just need to get a quote out to Joel. So I've went ahead and saved it. Now at this point, if I have an auto email turned on, that email is actually going to get sent out to him. And you would check to see that just by going over to our email center. And that's covered in some of our other videos and documents. But for now, I'm going to manually email this email out to Joel. So I'm just going to click the email button and we want to send him our quote email. I'll go ahead and click on that and it fills itself out based off of that email template there. And I can go ahead and hit send. So now he has a link to that quote. And what we did is we just emailed him a link to this page right here because each event is going to have its own unique quote page. So I can click on that and it'll actually open it up. I opened it up in a new tab here and this is the link Joel will have been provided. So the benefit to doing it that way is if he calls in 15 minutes later and maybe wants to add on something else to the order, I'll uh, erase my search term here. Let's say he wanted to add a dunk tank onto the order and didn't know how to do it on this page just by clicking the edit button or adding the dunk tank on right here. I could actually do that over the phone for him. I click the dunk tank, add it on, and it's asking me if I want to change the teardown time to a new value because now that we have the dunk tank, that increases my teardown time. I'm going to go ahead and say, yep, we want to update that. And 
There we go. So it updated my setup and teardown time based off of the recommended amount there. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit save again. So now when Joel comes back to this quote, he's able to see an updated order here. So if you have online booking turned on from this page, Joel could actually move forward on his own. So he could just click the book this event button and that'll take him over to where he could sign a contract and make a payment. Now, if I wanted to, I could upgrade this for him. Okay, so right now in the quote status, if I go down here and look at my contract link, we'll open this up in a new tab, it's telling me, you know, I don't have a valid link. Well, the reason he can't get a contract is because he isn't in the correct status, which is this bar up here. So I could upgrade his status and hit save, and then I could email out our contract email, which will give him that link directly to the contract, or Joel from that quote could actually hit the book this event button. And what our system's doing here is it's now upgrading his event to a contracted event and then giving him that link. Uh, so now he can move forward on his own, make a signature here. We'll punch in a phony name and we're gonna have him agree to our terms. He's now signed off on that and he can issue a payment. So if I go back to his page here and I refresh it, I can see that he's moved along in the process. So he's been automatically upgraded to contract. I can see we put a flag on the event here, which notifies us that he did initiate a booking. If I'm done, you know, if I don't need that flag sitting around notifying me of that anymore, I can hit that X button and that'll zero that out so I won't have to see it next time. Now throughout this whole process, I could have been receiving alerts if I wanted to. So if I open up my settings and I go over to alert center, this will bring me over and this is a whole list. Most of the time, you're pretty much gonna wanna have every single one of these turned on. But when he goes to sign his contract, I can have that notify me and I could click on this specific alert here and I could enter in all of the email addresses that I wanted alerted every time a customer is signing that contract. Um, so that's nice to have. There's really not too much to creating an event. It's, it's mostly just filling in the blanks. One of the nice things to do, uh, you know, when you are booking through this method of you actually going through the software is you're going to have more control over it. So if you're doing, taking a booking over the phone, or maybe you're editing one that came in off the website, you have complete control as the owner here. So if I needed to issue a discount or an extra fee, I could do that here. Maybe I wanted to do a backwards discount and say that we are going to give him an out the door price of 850. I could type that in the total here. And this is actually going to give him that discount of 5831. And again, I'm just going to hit the save button here. And now it's updated. So that's a good starter on this. Um, there's always more to learn, but this should be enough just to get you going as far as uh, being able to list events by yourself manually in the back end. But as always, if you have any questions, just make sure and let us know.